everyone, it's V. Welcome back to my channel. I'm having a lot of camera issues lately, so I'm refilming the introduction to this video. Um, a lot of the original footage I filmed was unusable because my tripod setup was getting messed up and my cat was interrupting me film. And I tried to refilm it again on my computer and then the files got corrupt. So here's the intro once again. Um, I really wanted to make a quick video just to show you a couple different syllabus spreads that I use in the past year because I know that it's back to school time and maybe some of you are looking for ideas on how to be productive during the school year and stay organized. So here are just some ideas that I used during my first year in grad school. So without much further ado, here is the video. I have here two of my bullet journals. This is the one I'm currently using and this is my old one. And both of these are ones that I've used while I've been in school. I've, I'm almost done my first year of my MSW program. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple different spreads that I've used. So um, just to explain, um, the first couple of classes, so I take one class at a time and I take six classes a year. So that's why there's not too many complicated like multiple class schedules and things like that. I'm a part-time student and this is just the way the program is. So for the first two classes, I would actually just print out the syllabus It'd be a stack of papers and I would what I would use it for is I would check off all of the readings I did just to keep myself on track and keep track of all the deadlines and um, it was really helpful to do that and I created a bullet journal setup that did essentially that same thing now the first couple of classes I had the format of the class was very similar I found that because usually the class is like a part one and then part two of the same topic, even though there were two separate classes, they would generally follow the same format in terms of the schedule of the work when things were due. And so I have a couple different spreads for each of those that I will walk through. Okay, I just let my cat in, so he might be in the audio. Okay, so this is the first, here's the first one. I have made a video of this when I first set it up, kind of early in 2020. I want you all to see that this is what I'm dealing with. Okay, my cat has settled down on my bed, so hopefully he will not make any more noise. Okay, so this is the spread that I created the first time I tried to do this system. And so my classes are seven weeks long, and so there are seven rectangles for each week and then an assignment and task. So for this class, by far, this class was the most reading that I've had to do for any of the classes that I've had so far. Um, human behavior in the social environment. So we were reading a lot of different theories and perspectives on human behavior and human development. And then there was um, discussion posts on the online forum every week, as well as three papers. So there was like a weekly assignment, a couple weekly assignments actually. And then another thing about this class was there were required readings and then also recommended readings. Um, so this generally worked for this class. Um, some of the weeks had many more readings than there were lines on here. So how I would use this on a weekly basis is just check it off as I read it and then go over and see what the assignments were and then do them and then check them off using the bullet journal sort of symbol system. And that was this. The next class that I took was racial justice and cultural oppression. And you see that I had a very similar format, um, but there were, as you can see, much less readings. Still, there are some um, recommended readings, but not as many as the other course. 
And then for um, this course, I see that I had to move up the deadlines here because it seems like there were more um, assignments each week. So I ran out of space here. So that was one of the things that probably should have planned better and I could have made these smaller so that there's more room for the task. But um, yeah, there's that. This class also had a couple different assignments, but I decided not to like color code them, but they're here. Okay, this is um, a different format that I've tried. So instead of having the um, rectangles for each week, I've just written it down the page um, in a sort of bullet format. And the assignments are integrated into the weeks because I think when I was using a format like this, when there were so many assignments, I would it would be hard to kind of keep track um, which assignments went with which readings and which weeks because I didn't number the weeks with like week one, week two, so then I had to keep track of the dates. So that got a little bit confusing. So this is um, what I came up with. And for the most part, this worked out pretty well. Um, also much less readings, this course, this was a research course. And so um, we worked on a big assignment for the whole semester and it was broken up into different parts which were due every week except for like one of the weeks here week six yeah there was much less to keep track of and um yeah i would just check off things as i went okay so that is another kind of syllabus spread you can use and now we'll move over to my current bullet journal this is the first syllabus spread in this journal um, and this is for the second part of that research component and this is a new type of format. So what I did was I created seven sections for the seven weeks again. So these are the weeks so week one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I split them down the middle and created um, one side for the readings both the online lecture readings and the textbook readings, which I hadn't been including the lecture readings in the previous ones. And they turned out being really long because some of these lectures also included video tutorials for SPSS, which is a statistics software. And so I wanted to include the lecture in here as well. And then I also have the task and deadlines on the other side so that I could really easily keep track of them. I kind of like this better than just having them straight down. I think it looks more sleek for some reason. And I also took way more time into kind of creating a nice little header system. And um, we all also have here when we have class and then also the assignments, which are the ones with the uh, deadline symbol, the exclamation point. Um, these other things in here um, were actually things that I scheduled in. So then I would see the readings and then I would also, these are broken down by the days of the week here. So it's kind of like a schedule. So then I would also um, schedule in when I would do each reading. So you can hear, I see here, I started doing it here. Um, and then I would also schedule in when I would start assignments because some of them took um, a little bit longer than others. This was a lesson learned from the literature review that I did in my previous research class, which took a whole two weeks. And also when I was doing that literature review, I was also working then. And so I didn't have enough time to put in as much effort into writing that as I wanted. And I ended up working until the very last minute and just submitting it without even reading it through. And I hate doing that. I really like to enjoy the writing process. And so I really wanted to structure my time better so that I could put my best foot forward. And so here we also have a literature review and it being the second course in this series, it wasn't as guided as the first one. So I knew that I wanted to have more time. So I would schedule that to start it the week before that the, that it's due because really you only have a couple weeks or maybe a week to really get any papers done yeah so this is what has been really helpful in terms of 
I'm using this as a sort of schedule. Um, and right now, I'm still in the midst of this course. I am in week six, so I did read the lecture yesterday, so that's checked off. I did the homework in advance, and I've already submitted it, so it's checked off. Um, yeah, and this class is almost done. There's only one more assignment left. I guess two more assignments left. This one, this homework assignment, and then our poster and paper, um, which I'm working on. And there's no readings for next week. So I think all in all, I just wanted to show you all these different ideas because what I found is that the different classes require a different type of structure. Of course, you can mix and match um, the structures and the formats for a syllabus spread, um, but some of them, like this one, the readings are very light. And other ones, like my human behavior class, there were way more readings and so i would probably look through the syllabus and see what you kind of need oh the other thing for this research class and even the one previously is that in my other classes our homework assignments were usually due sunday nights or monday nights and for these two classes the assignments are due like other days of the week so we have a homework homework assignment that is due on thursdays at midnight that's here thursdays and then also the week starts on tuesday because that's how the course is structured um and so um these class these last two classes the assignments were due on other days of the week other than saturdays sundays or mondays and so i really needed this kind of system because some of our assignments were due let's see like this one was this assignment here which you can't see our first assignment was due on a friday and then we have an assignment due on a Sunday. So, and then the homeworks are due on Thursdays. So this was much easier to keep track of when the assignments were due on different days of the week rather than, you know, if the assignment's always gonna be due on Saturday and you kind of just know that, then another kind of task list might work better. Um, yeah, so the, these are a couple ideas for my syllabus spreads. I just wanted to create a video because I knew that a lot of people were going to be starting school and then also starting online school, which is what I've been doing for the past year. And so just wanted to give some tips. I'll actually be creating another video on my general reflection of doing an online school, um, getting my MSW online and also my just general first year experience. So keep an eye out for that. And thank you for watching. Make sure you like this video if it was helpful for you and subscribe for more. Bye.